What's up everyone, Emery Hunt, the Czar of the Playbook, bringing you another edition of Film Session with the Czar. This is a 2020 NFL Draft edition of Film Session with the Czar, where today we're going to talk about three quarterback prospects coming from the HBCU ranks that we definitely want you to keep an eye on. DeAndre Francois of Hampton has had essentially four careers in college. He started out at Florida State, bursting onto the scene as a redshirt freshman, tossing 20 touchdowns to seven interceptions, completing passes at 8.4 yards an attempt. Then he got hurt in the opener in 2017 against Alabama and missed the entire season. He also had an up and down junior season where he battled both inconsistency and the unstableness that was surrounding him, especially up front along the offensive line. He then transfers to Hampton where he was able to find some stability and start to regain that bright light of potential that we saw from him back in 2016. Now there are a lot of things that make Francois such a good quarterback prospect and the first is his toughness. To me, this is a vital component to a quarterback's game. You have to be able to stare down a gun barrel and still make throws. We've seen this at both Florida State and at Hampton. Francois has been able to do just that. He's unafraid of pressure and shows the capability to hit big plays in the passing game at all levels of the field when he's being pressured by the opposing defense. Another aspect of Francois' game that's pretty impressive is his arm strength. Now, there are various thoughts out there about arm strength and the value of it, but I look at it like this. If you have it, great. If you don't, it's not detrimental. However, for DeAndre Francois, having the arm strength and velocity that he has on his passes allows him to shrink the field. So when you see him making far hash throws like this on a rope, it puts the defensive back in a bind because normally not many quarterbacks can make this throw or throws like this consistently so it puts strain on him in coverage to be able to close even quicker on the ball or in fact cheat a little bit and anticipate the problem with that is that if you do it enough any quarterback or play caller worth his salt will dial up plays to take advantage of your over aggressiveness out there on the perimeter and because the nfl game is essentially played in the middle of the field you have to be able to drive the football in tight spaces and that's where having arm strip like francois is a benefit while Francois' placement can be better, I think he's pretty solid overall in that area. I really like how he's not afraid to challenge the middle of the field in the passing game, and in doing so, you have to be sure to place passes exactly where you need them to be, as there's no room for error in the NFL over the middle of the field. A high pass gets intercepted and gets your receiver knocked out. A low pass puts your receiver, who's running full speed, in an awkward situation to maybe go down and get the football and could limit any run after the catch opportunity while also potentially getting him knocked out as well. I think he does a solid job in the placement department at all levels of the field, giving his receivers a chance to make plays both at the catch point and also after the reception. I thought offensive coordinator Brian White and quarterback coach Zach Grossi did a fantastic job in helping grow the game of DeAndre Francois in two major areas. One was getting him out on the perimeter and throwing on the move, especially to his left. That's a tough throw for a right-handed quarterback to make, and Francois was able to make those throws, stay technically sound, and get his shoulder square and put the ball where it had to be on the move to his left. You see right here in this Pro Day video a workout, him hitting a deep shot down the field, both with perfect placement and velocity. This was a great way for the coaches to make use of the athleticism he has in the passing game. Another area they were able to help him grow was in being able to move defenders in the passing game with his eyes. At Florida State, he was pretty green in that regard, seeing that he was a freshman in 2016 and playing behind an offensive line that wasn't up to Florida State standards in 2018. This past season at Hampton, they were able to help him make significant strides in that area, in which I think also tied into him feeling a little bit more comfortable in taking those chances over the middle of the field that we talked about earlier in this video. So credit the coaching and the player himself for taking the necessary steps in development at the position. And finally, throwing with touch was something that I saw in Francois' game where he made tremendous growth as a player too often earlier in his career Everything had to be a fastball. Now he's able to pick and choose his spots when and where he has to throw with power and when and where he wants to throw with touch. So in conclusion, he's a player that has played in a pro style offense at Florida State under Jimbo Fisher, a pro spread offense here at Hampton, while also being coached by some pro coaches at Hampton as well. So he's coming off of a stellar week of work at the 2020 College Rhode Island Showcase and has built up a lot of momentum heading into this draft process. 
Ryan Stanley out of Florida A&M was a 2019 MEAC Offensive Player of the Year after passing for over 2,500 yards, 23 touchdowns to only seven interceptions, completing 60% of his passes. Now, he's a highly decorated passer, being a three-time All-MEAC performer and leaving FAMU as the all-time passing leader in history. This is a program that has Quinn Gray, Ken Riley, Pat Bonner, Damian Fleming, Jawan Sider, amongst others that have played that position at a high level, and he leaves as the best. Now, I met with Florida A&M head coach Willie Simmons this past January, and he spoke highly of his quarterback and his prospects as a pro player. Uh, you know, Ryan, uh, what can you say about a guy who leaves as an all-time leading passer at a place like FAMU, who some would dub quarterback you at this level? Um, but Ryan's a, a phenomenal, you know, young man, great leader. Um, seen the shares ups and downs here at Florida A&M, but has persevered, has really stuck through the challenges, and, and has left his mark on this program. You know, but he has prototypical size. You know, Ryan's a six-three guy. Um, you know, about 210 pounds and, and runs better than many people give him credit for. So I think the, the NFL scouts will be surprised when they put him on the clock and see how fast he runs in the 40. But can make all the throws, um, you know, when he sets his feet, when he, when he throws in rhythm, uh, he has NFL arm talent. And so I think the biggest thing for him will just be putting together a good, solid workout. Um, you know, many scouts have talked about his physical ability, um, now they want to sit him down, talk football with him, see how much he knows as far as coverage is and things of that nature. You know, But I think Ryan will be a guy that can definitely get into a camp and, uh, and really impress some people with his physical ability. And speaking of those abilities, one ability that I really like about Ryan Stanley's game is that he has that ability to create. And that's huge when you're playing pro football because things will never go according to plan. You have to make plays off script. We saw him do this a lot at FAMU, which is why he's one of the more successful quarterbacks they had come through there in quite some time. We talked about it with DeAndre Francois, and we'll mention it here again with Ryan Stanley, the ability to play well over the middle of the field. That is huge in the NFL, partly because of the hash marks being closer, closer in. So the game will be played in the middle of the field. You have to be able to win there. Stanley does not lack confidence in the passing game and going over the middle of the field. One of the major reasons why I believe is because he's able to drive the football really well. And because he's able to drive the ball with great velocity, it affords him the confidence to make those tight window throws more so than some quarterbacks in this draft class that are afraid to make those same attempts. Now his deep ball accuracy, in my opinion, is a plus, but where he really shines, I think as a prospect, is in the intermediate area on those in breaking routes. He does a great job of anticipating some of those windows and is able to protect the receiver in the process by placing the ball perfectly where it needs to be or placing it to where the guy can make plays after the catch or if it's deeper in the end zone where he can haul in the reception and get a foot down and bounce. I think a lot of it comes with his fluid throwing motion, which helps him hit top velocity with consistency. He's one of the more consistent passers in this regard in this draft class. Ryan Stanley's game reminds me a lot of Chad Kelly. I think getting into a program where they can smooth out a little bit of the rough edges that he still has in this game, they'll be getting a guy that's confident, that has a swagger, that can make any throw on the football field, and one that is definitely a winner. Our last quarterback that we're going to talk about today is Jalen Morton from Prairie View A&M. Of all the quarterbacks, I think he has the most upside. Now, he had the benefit of getting coached by current FAMU head coach Willie Simmons when he was a head coach at Prairie View and current head coach Eric Dooley, who's one of the best offensive minds in football. Morton finished his career with over 5,200 yards passing and 1,500 yards plus rushing on the ground. He scored 64 total touchdowns and averaged nine yards a pass attempt this year as a senior, the highest in his career. From a physical standpoint, he's got everything that you want at the position. He's got the strong arm that's able to drive the football at all levels of the field. I think he's got great ability to place the football really well. For instance, take a look at this throw versus Texas Southern in the opening game of the season. Now, on the stat sheet, it'll say this was an interception by Texas Southern. But when you look at this throw, look at where Morton places his football. You can't place that ball any better if you walk down there and hand it to him. So when asked to throw up the seam, I believe he's above average in that regard as a passer. I also believe that he's underrated athletically with how he's used in the run game. This is a big reason why he finished with over 1,500 yards rushing and 22 rushing touchdowns. He's got the athleticism to be able to escape and extend while also making it an 11 on 11 game in the QB run game. Morton definitely opened up some eyes this season at Prairie View A&M, but also down to the 2020 College Gridiron Showcase 
where his ability off of play action and driving the football in the intermediate to deep area of the field was on display. For him, it's about consistency and being healthy. He missed some time over the course of his career with a variety of nagging injuries, but with a clean bill of health, the tools are definitely there for him to grow, develop, and be a productive pro. So that's a wrap for this edition of Film Session with the Czar. I'm Emery Hunt, the Czar of the Playbook. Be sure to follow me on all of my social media accounts. Don't forget to check out and subscribe to Football Game Plans Network located at youtube.com slash football game plan. Also check out and subscribe to Football Game Plan Podcast on iTunes. And there you can find our Scout Team Podcast, which has a ton of 2020 NFL Draft prospect interviews and leave us a five-star rating. Also pick up your copy of our Football Game Plan NFL Draft Guide. You can find that at footballgameplan.com slash 2020 draft guide. For those out there in the New York City area, every Thursday and Friday on cable television, Game Plus Network channel 238 is our scout team television show. Be sure to check that every Thursday and Friday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. Again, check with your cable provider for channel listings.